from MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Fishing regulations on the Madison River were approved at the end of 2020. So where do things stand today? I'm Gabby Crevett and I'll have that full story coming up. And we're learning more about two teens who fell off a 60-foot bridge near Billings this weekend during a pileup crash. What family members are saying, that's also coming up. 6.30 on this uh, Monday, March 1st, Chet Lehman, Holly Brantley, Matt Howell. That story is unbelievable there out of uh, mm -hmm. Billings area, Lockwood. Uh, we'll have that in a moment. Looking at uh, the photos of that unfolding, and I was just, uh, my eyes were bugged out. I couldn't believe it. It is yeah. your worst nightmare, and it is the worst oh, place to have that happen yeah. on a bridge over the uh, Yellowstone, Yellowstone River. Yeah. Just absolutely terrifying. Meantime, not terrifying outside. It's gorgeous. Out it there is right beautiful now, this yeah, morning. Lots lovely. of clear skies for most of the area. It looks like our temperatures are going to warm up nicely. You still need those coats as you head outside. Don't get me wrong. Temperatures into the teens. Wind chills have been down into the single digits uh, this morning, but pretty quiet conditions overall uh, with clear skies. I do have a great photo coming up here uh, in the next half hour. You don't want to miss. It uh, looks like our planner calling for daytime highs into the upper 30s to low 40s for most of the area. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon, a warm week ahead. We're going to talk more in depth about all of that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Matt. First here, the Belgrade community is rallying around the family that lost their home Saturday morning to a fire. Yeah, this was the scene on a Green Tree Drive around 830 in the morning on Saturday. Now a GoFundMe page has raised nearly $3,000 to help that family start over. Firefighters say the home is a total loss, but a mother and her three kids were able to escape. Central Valley Fire Marshal Bruce Hennequin says the fire started in a rear bedroom where they say a child was using a cigarette lighter. Their mother was able to reach the children, get them out of the house safely, then go back inside with a bystander to rescue a litter of puppies. Both the mother and the bystander were treated at the scene for smoke inhalation. Well, a victim of yesterday's interstate pileup in Billings is speaking out to correct some information about the heroic deeds of her grandchildren. Yeah, Montana Highway Patrol reported Celia Portra and Gage Wakeman were off the Yellowstone River Bridge to avoid oncoming cars by a witness. But the teen's mother says they were pushed while helping to save someone in the crash. MTN's Mitch After Loggi a 30 car pileup crash closed Interstate 90 in Billings on Saturday, two teenagers are recovering from a 60 foot drop off of the interstate bridge over the Yellowstone River. Joan Whiteman runs him, said her car was one of the first in the pileup. Her grandchildren, 19 year old Celia Poitra and 17 year old Gage Whiteman, were also in the car and leapt to action to help others involved in the crash. Joan said her grandkids ran into a car dangling partially off of the bridge to help save a woman and her two children trapped inside. During the rescue attempt, the teens experienced heavy vibrations on the bridge from oncoming vehicles crashing into the pileup. They were launched off of the bridge where they fell about 60 feet to the ground below. Both of the teens sustained critical injuries and are being treated at Billings hospitals for broken bones and other injuries. Celia and Gage looked back and they said, there's babies in that car's going to go over the bridge and they jumped off and they were gone while they were trying to get that those two babies out of that one car and then next thing they were gone they said and Gates said all of a sudden it just shook and then we were on the ground. According to the mother that the two teens were trying to help out, Kylie Marie, she said that the teens were unsuccessful at rescuing her children before they were knocked off the bridge. Marie said that another man, Ryan Doran, helped get her children to safety. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. A GoFundMe page has been set up to benefit the teen's family. To find a link to the page, visit this story at kbzk.com. Unbelievable story right there. Mm -hmm. 634 now, the Fish and uh, Wildlife Commission ended last year by adopting some new fishing regulations designed to address the growing crowds on the Madison River. MTN's Gabby Crevett has an update on where things stand today. Fishing guides, conservation groups, and business owners are keeping a careful eye on the status of the Madison River regulations, which were approved by the Fish and Wildlife Commission at the end of 2020. So where do things stand today, and what are the chances that this process gets halted? Everybody didn't get exactly what they wanted, but in the end, I think it was a really fair outcome that most people can live with. 
Steve Lubick with the George Grant chapter of Trout Unlimited in Butte says everyone had to compromise when it came to the final rules adopted by the Fish and Wildlife Commission late last year. Some of those rules included cap and commercial use, implementing a rest and rotation system on certain parts of the river, and some changes to the walkway sections of the river. The rules are set to come into effect in 2022, but some involved in the process think things are moving a bit slow. We're into February. These rules passed in December. I hope it's just because the new commission is getting their feet on the ground and it hasn't reached their agenda yet. Most of the stakeholders who have contacted me are concerned that it, it's just fallen by the wayside. District 2 Commissioner with the Fish and Wildlife Commission says he understands why some are feeling uneasy. Are there going to be restrictions on the 2022 season? What are those restrictions and how do they plan their business around them? The next step is for the commission to appoint a Madison River work group to help get into the fine details of the rules. But before that, the commission must wait for FWP to make a process recommendation at their April 1st meeting. And FWP's chief of staff says if things move smoothly, commissioners can appoint the work group members by as early as June. But even with a tentative timeline, there are stakeholders that are worried the rules could be obstructed. So unless the same sort of process, the same sort of public process were to be re-engaged, that arm rule essentially carries the rule of the, you know, the force of law. Uh, and that's what we have to implement. Uh, can it be changed? Yes, it could be changed, but it would require the same sort of public process. Reporting in Madison County, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. This is a crucial week for stimulus checks, child tax credits, and unemployment benefits in Washington. Yeah, the House of Representatives passed early Saturday its version of a stimulus bill. Now it's up to senators to pass their version, and changes are expected. Our Joe St. George shows us why families should be paying close attention to both houses of Congress. March 14th is now quickly approaching. That's when bonus unemployment benefits expire for millions who are out of work. The bill is passed. While the House of Representatives passed their version of the bill over the weekend, this week we expect the bill to be changed in the Senate, all while the clock continues to tick. So what is in the stimulus bill right now? Well, $1,400 stimulus checks are included, and the Senate is not expected to change that. Unemployment benefits to workers and help for businesses will also stay. Aid to cities is expected to be included, but the amounts may change. The version that passed the House also expanded the child tax credit, and that is expected to remain. Parents would get $3,000 at least per child, up $1,000 from last year. Money to open schools and increase vaccine distribution will go up in this bill, but the $15 minimum wage hike will be taken out. The Senate simply doesn't have the votes to pass that right now. But that doesn't mean addressing the minimum wage is completely off the table. Senator Bernie Sanders is proposing tax penalties for corporations that don't pay their employees at least $15 an hour, and some Senate Republicans have proposed raising the minimum wage to a lower figure like $10 an hour. What Democrats don't want to happen is a major delay this week threatening that March 14th deadline. Although if there is one thing Washington is used to doing is waiting until the last minute to pass laws. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. <laughs> there is no doubt about that, Joe St. George. Um, waiting until the last minute. That same, same, never mind. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors are raising concerns about the Pope's upcoming visit to Iraq. Coming up, find out why they're not so much concerned about the Pope's health as that of the Iraqi residents. But first, let's check in with our friends at CBS This Morning and see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, Johnson & Johnson's single-shot COVID vaccine is getting ready for shipping after it was authorized for use in these United States. We'll ask the company's CEO when it will be available widely and how many doses the public will get at first. Also, millions could be forced from their homes when the federal freeze on evictions expires at the end of this month. See the toll, the economic toll the pandemic is taking on renters, but also building owners. And are we alone in the universe? The big news question. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your cosmic questions. We'll ask him if the Mars rover will find definitive proof of life on the red planet. All that at 7.